bench. You know this, can you see there? These are... <laughs> everybody today is a little walkthrough of my where I am now with my tomatoes and chilies and <laughs> it's not all it's not all grand roses and everything there's oh I'm having a little bit of trouble with some of my tomatoes I'm having big trouble with some of my tomatoes but what I want to talk about is this this process stage now that I'm in with the chilies with the tomatoes and big thank you to Nick Elliott who sent over the chilies you know what I mean that's it's a given that I didn't start them from seed but I'm in this stage now where and we mentioned this on the live shows every Monday at 7 p.m UK time please pop over honestly I've learned a tip from there off JB which blew us away to be honest and I'll tell you about that a little bit later but we mentioned on the show that you know, you, you spend a lot of time sowing them seeds, nurturing them seeds and taking good care of them and getting them to a nice plant. <laughs> Not so nice in there. And then take them up to the allotment and put them in your polyton, in your greenhouse and bang, they go down. And you wonder why, or they get knocked for a few days. And it's this transition period that's causing me a little bit of problems, but this is what we've got to get right. So if you like this show, do think about subscribing. Subscribing costs you nothing. All it means is that you'll get notified when I put videos out like this where the old tomato plants have failed. Hit the thumbs up, hit the bell icon, and then you'll get notified, like say, every one. And don't forget, on Mondays, 7 p.m., it's called the Potty Mouth Garden Club live chat. So we're at home, and like I say, we're you know, the, the potting sheds there. This is what I'm doing now to bring up the plants to up into the, the polyton or some of them anyways these ones a lot of these at the moment are just like house flowers you know i've got me kind of lobelia going on there i've got loads of these little kind of dingy little things that's some cosmos to go probably actually probably around here more lobelia it's all flowers but i'm now bringing out plants there's my baskets so what I'm doing is I'm putting my tomatoes in here and I'm just bringing them out and getting them kind of further checking the app get you into the light there checking the app making sure temperatures aren't gonna you know and then take them back in on a night time and I'll be honest I did mention this on the on the show that it is a little bit faffy do you know what I mean and I'll but I'll show you the reason why because you're going to have a look at me tomatoes now, why it's essential that you do this. So, let's step into the little pot and shed there, still going there. And on first inspection, she's looking all right there, eh? you know what I mean? I've got some nice tomatoes there. There's Nick's chilies doing fantastic tomatoes all there. Then we get to the main, look at the state of them. Now, I, I'm guessing it was temperature, but can you see the leaves there? You know, they've just died off. And I think it's temperature. I think what I did is I rushed. But these are, because these are in my good pots, <laughs> these were my main Brad's Atomic. And I've got some, I think, over there, which was like the second batch of Brad's Atomic, which are, st uh, you know, a lot nicer. And what I did, I think, what I rushed it. Now I'm hoping, the, yes, there's no getting away from it, they're knocked. If anyone can give us any advice for knocked tomato plants, basically I'm just gonna have to kinda, what I'm thinking of is keeping them here a little bit longer than the natural. This is, a, a, this is like a nice warm bench. You know this, can you see there? These are, <laughs> never touched right look at the quality 
<laughs> That's the ones. <laughs> That's the one. I'm, I've got nearly 20,000 years. I'm a bloody gardener on YouTube, man. And I kind of, look at the state of that, man. Look at the thickness of the stems. And that's, that's not just one. That's, you know what I mean? And I've been doing bloody tomato plants. That's a little bit dry as well, Tony. So what I did was, one second, I'm just getting... The apologies for that. They're on, they're on like a heated base, and it wasn't taking these tops off that got it because I had these off for quite a while. But I'm, they're on thermostats, and there's two things I did wrong on one of them, and I think it was this one more than this one. I turned the thermostat way down too much. I think I just took it to about, you know, from. I think 23, 24, down to about nine, something like, if I remember right. And this one did exactly the same, but operator error. This is what I'm thinking. This was not in the right place. Now, this is the little kind of probe. Can you see that there? That kind of governs the tip. Look at I'm still looking. But, but I, that was not in the right place, but I'm thinking... Well, if it was in the wrong place cold, it would keep heating to try and get that temperature. But I think we had a cold snap, not nowhere near. No, it shouldn't have been. The rule book says, you're all right, but it knocked us. Now, this is the secret bit. This is the bit that JB told me that I didn't know about and what I want to kind of make sure, you know, because Nick sent us over the chilies. I've got to, I've got to bloody look after them. He hardens the chilies off and not to put them out to harden them off. And this is, to be honest, I get outside so it's a better light. This is what flummoxed me and what caught me out probably a few times in the, in the kind of past history. If it's a nice bright hot summer day, that's not that good for chilli plants. And I'm probably guessing not for tomato plants, you know. They're a bit of a fickle thing where too much sun is just as bad as too cold. And especially chili plants need the kind of these days where they just get acclimatized and, and an over cloudy day is perfect. I mean, we're a, a kind of damp day. There's a little bit of wet rain in there, but it's a nice temperature, but there's no harsh sun. And JB says you can tell within a couple of days, three or four days, it's like the leaves change color. You know what I mean? They go like a darker color. And Steve with the tomatoes, bringing them out. I know it's like constant, but now I'm going to do it now. Bringing them out just stiffens them up in the wind and the breeze. And I'll show you a great example of this. These are my black, black strawberry ones. And they're all, let's have a look. I mean, they didn't get knocked by the sun. I haven't damaged these ones, but floppy loppy. Do you know what I mean? Look at it, just kind of, and they just need, they've been like almost like, staked up with each other as you can see there and actually there's bloody i don't want to get i've just noticed a little bit of flowers on there and i just <laughs> just suck her there now steve actually plants them as well i might be doing that early on this year as well but as you can see there that's going and i'm what i'll do you know it's gonna you can see the roots coming there once that plant goes into the polytunnel i'm gonna dig it deep right into their ground Give it a good start and hopefully that will go off. So what I'm going to do is take these, as much as I want, some of these plants now out just to give them a little taste of, you know, I've been, I honestly tried to kind of get me act together, but, you know, before I kind of learned, you know, different things, I've just done it very slowly now after the horse has bolted, do you know what I mean? But... I'm leaving the door open. I've been leaving the door open now through the day for about four days. You know, and so it's it's kind of acclimatizing now. They're coming out. So we've taken some out. Let me just show you where we're up to. There we go. And there's a great example of what JB was on about. Can you see? Because I've been doing these are my bigger ones. These are the grafted chilies that I got from B&Q a while ago in a little outing. 
Now you can see I've been doing them outside because they're a bigger plant, the different colour. They just go like a darker colour and that's a great example. So they haven't been out yet, so I've got to keep a close eye. Those are my fantastic Brad's Atomic, which are just, they're a, I'll be honest, they're a fickle plant anyways. Do you know what I mean? It's like not, they're not the bonniest looking plant, but they're certainly going to be a bit bonnier than that. Then these are my black strawberries and some more Brad's Atomic. You know, the strawberry ones, are, you know, I can't really fault them, but they just got knocked. The Brad's, you know, they haven't been knocked, but they're still just, no, oh, they just, and they've just got a final one. This was, you know, when I did the supermarket looking for, this is that, looking for tomato plants in supermarkets. That was this, what was it called? Golden, Golden Crown. So I just potted that up as well into a nice big pot for it. And what I'm going to do as well is, as you can see, I've got them in the kind of blue and the black, you know, the, the mushroom trees, is keep them in there. So now it's just an easy process of, of kind of carrying them in and out and not, you know, keeping them in there. So that's the home now until they go up or need repotting. So I don't have to like individually put each one on. This stage is, if not more important than kind of getting them up into the polytunnel as quick, just I'm telling this to myself so I can hear it. Slow down, Tony. It's not a race. <laughs> but this is an important part that I took for granted. Do you know what I mean? Kind of, yes, we can kind of take, like I say, I did last year. I took my chilies up a little bit too early and just, if Frost will get them, I'll get them. Um, that's, but this in-between stage, yes. Look out yourselves, take good care.